very warm welcome from my side. Uh, my name is Hans Rudolf Hochs. I'm working at the Friedrich Mischer Institute in Basel. And I have the honor to chair and guide you through this uh, webinar series. This is now the third webinar um, in this series of four webinars on advanced features of, um, of Galaxy. And um, let me introduce the today's three speakers. Um, we have uh, on board Elena Rashi. Uh, she is based at Erasmus MC in Rotterdam. She is heavily involved in Galaxy in the Galaxy Training Network as well as a sysadmin for usegalaxy.eu. Um, then Bernice Batu. Um, she is part of the Freiburg or the European Galaxy team, organizing all the training efforts. And we have Daniel Blankenberg, who is based at Cleveland Clinic in Ohio, and he is one of the Galaxy um, PIs. So, um, as already was mentioned, um, please put your questions into the Q&A. If you have small comments, uh, feel free to put them into chat. Um, we will try to answer um, the questions during the talk. Any unanswered questions will be discussed at the end of the um, at the end of the webinar. Um, but also, if you're not happy with the answers, feel free to ask the question again in the Galaxy Help for Forum. Um, we will provide the link where you can submit such questions at the at the end of the webinar as well. So with this. Um, I hand over to our three speakers and look forward to an interesting presentation. Thank you, Hans Rudolf, uh, for the warm introduction. So, as you mentioned, I am Helena Rasch. I am one of the, so Bjorn and I together developed the original implementation of this. Dan has taken this a lot further and made them a lot more scalable. And together they're now interact Galaxy Interactive Tools. And there are two different worlds when you work with Galaxy. There's this hard-coded sort of world in Galaxy where you have tools and you don't have a lot of control over how they execute or maybe some advanced parameters that aren't exposed in the tool wrapper. And then there's the complete freedom of worlds like Jupiter in our studio, where you can do anything your imagination can let you do, right? You can make whatever crazy, wonderful plots. And these two worlds were very separate for a long time. Galaxy provided a very stable and scalable analysis framework and a very wonderful workflow platform, but it didn't have all the freedom of expression that Jupyter and our studio do. And interactive tools really provide a link between these two worlds. Uh, next slide, please. So interactive tools function as tools within Galaxy and they give you the power of our studio and Jupyter directly in Galaxy next to your data. They look like tools, they work like tools, and they launch interactive environments that you can work with. So rather than just configuring this parameter and this parameter in a tool interface, now you have complete freedom to write whatever code you want to write. And you can access all of your data in Galaxy. Next slide, please. This is not limited to just Jupyter and our studio really any containerized application that can be run. And Bjorn put together a nice demo of this with the guacamole container, which is a VNC platform, and he put Xubuntu in there. And this is running live on usegalaxy.eu. And you can really let your imagination go crazy with the sort of the possibilities that can be provided by Galaxy Interactive Tools. You're no longer limited to a tool interface and whatever outputs you can produce, but to really anything your mind can imagine. Any pesky X11 applications or desktop applications like the interactive bandage desktop, you can imagine putting all of these sort of things in containers and then putting them in Galaxy to be used within your workflows within, within Galaxy as a tool. No more desktop applications needed. Next slide, please. So these have been available for quite some time on usegalaxy.eu. Uh, the American server usegalaxy.org has added them recently. Uh, they were tested during the smorgasbord event that some of you may have been part of. And soon the Australian server will be joining as well. They're very well supported. If you have any questions letting, getting them running, please let us know. We're happy to help you. And they're a really cool feature. Next slide. This will be live.usegalaxy.eu. 
So we wanted in Use Galaxy U to showcase all of the wonderful features of these tools. And we put together this quick, uh, quick view into all of the different tools. So when you go to live.usegalaxy.eu, you see a quick overview of all of the different interactive tools that are available, and you can launch them directly. This really makes, if you don't need to, if you don't want to use all of the advanced tools of Galaxy, you just want to start an RStudio server, this is a great way to do that. If you just want to start a Jupyter Notebook, this is a great way to do that. Next slide. How they work internally is not so complicated. Their job is just like every other Galaxy job. They have some XML, they start a Docker container in the background, and then they tell Galaxy where the container is running and how to access it. When the user goes to Galaxy, they can then know which containers are available to them, which are running, and Galaxy will proxy all of those requests to the container running on the cluster, which really provides for a really nice, scalable way to run all of these interactive tools. They're just tools that we get to run with all of the rest of our jobs. Next slide, please. So the next step of we've got Jupyter and we've got our studio, we're running them as tools, is how do we make them part of the analysis workflow? So you've analyzed some data in Galaxy, then you go to our studio and you want to plot them. And at the end, you'll need to publish a reproducible history. So what we've done, next slide please, is we've built a bridge between the two of them to help really integrate them well, right? We've got inside the container, a way to access all of the data in your Galaxy history, in your Galaxy period. And then once you've analyzed and plotted that data, you've made some nice results inside our studio, then you can push them back to Galaxy. And this is true for all of the different interactive tools we have. They can all access the data in your Galaxy history. Some of them can have more access or less. And then once they've done their analysis steps, they've done their plotting, then they can push this data back to Galaxy. And to make sure that all of this stays reproducible, both the Jupyter and the RStudio notebooks have ways to save the entire contents of what you did, all of the big lines of programming, everything in them. You just press save, a nice green button in Jupyter, and it'll save all of the contents back to your Galaxy history. Next slide. And I think that's over to you, Dan. Yes, so here's a quick demo of using a Galaxy Interactive tool. This comes from the Anvio tool suite. Um, and you can see we just selected a standard tool out of the left-hand side. So um, in that tool panel, just like um, any ordinary tool, um, that's in addition to that really cool showcase at live.usegalaxy.eu. We configured the tool, we clicked execute. It took two inputs, it's creating three outputs. We're now waiting for the interactive tool to become live. So now we're gonna go click to access this tool. Um, now we're inside of the Anvio interactive server. Our own personal server has been launched just for our data to use. We're gonna make some changes. We're gonna save it. We're now gonna go ahead and we're going to shut down the Anvio server. Um, and then when this, uh, we've, we've saved the files, we've shut it down and then the, the, the tool will then turn green. Um, so that we've actually gone ahead and we've created um, outputs within our uh, Galaxy history. So uh, just a quick little uh, image of what we just saw in that demo, in case you're unable to follow along so quickly. The, these are just standard Galaxy tools that anyone can access. Um, you can run as many of them at a time as you would like. Um, each individual uh, interactive tool is actually able to create um, multiple access points. So you can have multiple uh, web applications running with from a single interactive tool, but you just configure the tool and you click execute, just like you normally would with any other Galaxy tool. Um, when the interactive tool uh, result view is available, you just click here to display. Um, you're also able to access all of the interactive tools that you may have running from the user menu. And I'll show a, a screenshot of that later. Um, in addition to uh, just being standard tools, because Galaxy interactive tools are standard tools, we're able to use them fully within workflows. So in this case, we have um, a workflow generated from um, one of the Anvio tutorials that they have provided. Um, and here you can see we have the Anvio interactive server as a tool in the middle of the workflow. So when you execute the workflow, all of the, the, the standard batch operations that Galaxy is uh, generally running um, are executed. 
And then when the inputs to that interactive tool are then available, uh, that will then be launched and the user can know, then go interact with that interactive tool, do manual changes, um, save, exit. And then once that those, those, um, those uh, files have been saved, and once we um, have exited the Anvio server, downstream tools will then launch on those outputs. And those downstream tools can be standard Galaxy tools, or they can be uh, additional Galaxy interactive tools. So launching a, a Galaxy interactive tool with a workflow just works exactly the same way as just running any workflow. Um, you just go to the workflow menu, you select your workflow, you click run, you configure the workflow with your inputs, um, and then you click on run workflow. Uh, the workflow will then be executed. You have this nice um, page uh, here from the workflow invocation showing you what steps are it's going on. Um, but then at this point, uh, there's not necessarily a, a very good indication from this page about where to access that uh, interactive tool from. But we can always just go to the user menu and then click on active interactive tools. And that will bring us to a list of all of our running or queued interactive uh, tools. Um, and so you can have any number of these that may be running depending upon the, the limits at that server that you're using. Um, and you just click on this link. So this is also a really nice way in case you accidentally closed your Jupyter notebook window, you can always come back and relaunch it and reload it and, and gain access to it again um, up until you, you, you shut it down. So we were at, um, so after this presentation, so as Elena already said, so um, the interactive tools are already available in Galaxy and especially in usegalaxy.eu for one and a half years. So we were thinking how the community is using them now. Uh, next slide, please. And so we, Elena extracted from the usage, um, how they are being used in usegalaxy.eu, the 20 different interactive tools available there. So not only in Jupyter in RStudio, and she plotted using RStudio within Galaxy, uh, she plotted these graphs following by months, uh, how, uh, how the different interactive tools have been used. And you see that RStudio is quite used, uh, especially um, if you see a big peak uh, this year in February, it's when we run a big events using uh, where our studio was part of the training there. But you see that uh, over the year, over the months, different uh, interactive tools are well used uh, quite often by the community and the user there. Next slide, please. Um, and then I went uh, and I asked several of our users uh, how they use the interactive tools on their for their research. So um, I asked um, Wolfgang uh, how they're using the interactive tools for the COVID-19 analysis on newsgalaxy.eu. So if you follow the, the webinar that already happened uh, for Elixir, you know that um, there were major efforts from the Galaxy community on the COVID-19 uh, analysis where uh, to make uh, data accessible via GitHub uh, with six different type of analysis, five different uh, Galaxy servers, including Galaxy, uh, Galaxy Australia, providing uh, the resources to compute that this data, workflow and tools available on all these servers um, with a workload shared amongst a cloud um, with uh, that. So you can find more details about uh, this uh, effort from the Galaxy community on uh, COVID-19 galaxyproject.org. Next slide, please. Um, and so when they started this uh, type of analysis, uh, they started with a workflow. So one year ago, when the, the, they got the first data from COVID, they started uh, for the variant calling analysis that started with uh, uh, workflow that they had. Um, and then um, they wanted to do some report for that, that with nice visualizations. So they started by running the workflow and creating some Jupyter notebooks inside Galaxy to um, generate reports of variance code. And over the months, uh, this exploratory analysis moved from yeah, Jupyter notebooks, not only, but also they will be uh, slowly replaced by regular uh, Galaxy tools and workflow so that everything can be fully and nicely automated. automated. Uh, 
So the exploratory part that has been used using uh, Jupyter notebooks has been exported as uh, Galaxy tools once the analysis was correctly and nicely set up. Next slide, please. please. And the another, um, I asked also Anne Fuyo that works in, uh, in uh, Norway, how oh, she's using the Galaxy, the, the interactive tools for a community. So the climate uh, analysis, so you can find more details about this uh, nice project on climate.usegalaxy.eu. So they have uh, different tools for climate analysis there, and especially they have some interactive tools uh, for climate. Uh, Pangeo using Jupyter, uh, so inside Jupyter Labs and Sun Panoply. And so um, she reported to me that uh, these tools are quite used by our community and they really like, love them. Next slide, please. Um, so, for example, the Jupyter Lab uh, for Oceans, Atmosphere, Land and Climate. So it's a Jupyter Lab with dedicated uh, research, dedicated um, um sorry with um ah i lost my word um with specific libraries uh, that they need so there is the pangeo python ecosystem so pangeo is a community platform from big data geoscience they have also some uh, community earth system models inside uh, this jupyter lab um and some uh, um ESM file tools, so it's uh, Earth system modeling uh, uh, inside, uh, so it's uh, uh, libraries for that. Uh, so everything is packed in this Jupyter uh, lab. And when you launch this Jupyter specific Jupyter lab, then you have all these libraries already installed for you. You don't need to to treat, to install the one you are interested in. And so some of the use case uh, that our users, are, how the people are using that is um, three different use cases. So development of climate models. So for that, there is a small configuration of the Jupyter Labs with only one CPU and small memory quantity. Um, <clears throat> and what they do is usually they, they try to identify the best model for the data, recompile it, test it, and, and more. it's more of this exploratory development aspect of new climate models. A second use case is to co-design for new Galaxy tools and development, a bit similar to the COVID-19 aspect. So where uh, you they test some Python script, they can share it um, between different researchers to find and identify which option are the best to show in, in what can be next. Uh, uh, a real, no, I don't know, I, I cannot say a real Galaxy tool because interactive tools are to uh, Galaxy tools, but uh, standard Galaxy tool there. Um, the next, the th third use case is data analysis and visualization. So then it's more for advanced users that are familiar with Python and uh, visualizations. And usually what uh, Anne is doing is uh, she's sharing um, some a starting point for the, for this analysis. So she starts an analysis that she can share with her researchers um by sharing the history and uh, then they can do afterwards um, customize this uh, data analysis and this type of especially the last one is becoming more and more um, popular within our community so i asked also Anne how often she's using this jupyter lab and she told me that she's using every day so every day she has at least one op open running jupyter lab uh, for climate and when it stopped she's just restarting a new one because and i quote her there is always something to do with it so it's like she's really like one of our poor users of jupyter lab um and the feedback that she got is um are quite good from the community so more and more people like it it depends mostly on the how the difficulty to import data um there is more and more demand to add new packages. It means that the people are using and have, uh, get uh, get out of that. They need more. They, they ask more more package to add, be added to these Jupyter Labs. Um, and the, they are now thinking about how to then after seeing the videos from Dan, they have already the answers. But how to integrate that uh, inside uh, workflows um as galaxy tools to generate plot and reports so it will be their next step i have the feeling now next slide please the other interactive tool that this community is using is this plan apply uh 
viewers. So it looks like this uh, here. It's a screenshot of the interactive tools. Um, you see on the on the bottom left. Uh, so it's really uh, like um, desktop uh, to um, tools to visualize data, and uh, especially uh, with maps and, and and things. And so the the the, the different use case for that is mostly so the main use case is data visualization, but also a way to save images uh, from visualization and create some videos with time series. Um, so I forgot to mention for the previous one, so Anne developed also a, a training for that. So it's the same for Panoply, so that she created a, a trainings for your for our users to, to learn how to use this type of interactive tools. Uh, this tool seems to be really loved by the community, so a lot of people, uh, she got a lot of good nice feedbacks about that. Um, and Anne is using, for example, her, it once a month at least. Uh, every time she needs to visualize data, she doesn't know. So when she needs to to explore the data, it's quite fast. So she really liked it, um, and she's closing it after data exploration. So, yeah, it's quite interesting to see how this community is using the, these interactive tools. Next slide, please. The next person I asked is Yvan. So Yvan is working with ecology. So I asked him, uh, how, I know that they are using these interactive tools quite a lot and he was pushing quite a lot to get these interactive tools into Galaxy. Um, and so I asked him uh, how the, uh, the community are using them. Um, so there is, again, three use case. Um, so inside the complete analysis, where uh, they do some data collection for biodiversity and uh, environmental data, then they have some sort of workflow to select and filter the data. And after for doing the modeling of of this um, of this data, they use uh, our shiny uh, interactive tools called Wallace. And so it's a same. It's again uh, inside Galaxy they can do that. Um, he also wrote. Um, uh, created a training for that to learn how to do that. The second uh, use case is again data visualization uh, using the R Shiny Geo Explorer, where you can have again uh, some sort of cartography and visualizations, as you can see in the middle. You have data points, visualization, histograms, uh, every, and a map on the on the side. So it's a good way to visualize the data, explore the data, and the. Um, the other use case I should have put that before is data cleaning. So uh, and they're using uh, with Open Refine, uh, they can really do a, a data cleaning of that. Um, yep, and that's the main use case for the ecology. And I, I saw some uh, some comments to the, today on the chat, so I know that uh, there is more coming in update to, that will be come soon on our shiny integration of more our shiny integration of interactive tools, pushing by pushed by Ivan. Next slide, please. Then I asked also one of uh, so Mehmet uh, is working uh, in the Fibro Galaxy team and he's doing some single cell data analysis and I know that he's using the interactive tool so I asked him how he's doing so he's mostly um, so usually he has is he, he has some data on Galaxy but sometimes he needs to do some data exploration for the single cell data analysis with a Jupyter not Jupyter Labs with uh, ScanPy which is a Python library. Uh, or Arthur Rat. Um, and sometimes, uh, so it happened that he's doing that offline, so on his own computer, but sometimes he has some issues like not enough RAM because the data are too big, the data sets, yeah, the it, it, data sets are too big or something like this. And what he's doing is sometimes uh, is often, quite often he told me, uh, that he's uh, putting the day, the, the, he's using Galaxy for the resources itself. So using the fact that you you have more more RAM than you could maybe have on a small, on a computer, so it's a nice uh, infrastructure use case also. Next uh, slide, um, and I think I end in to Elena. Thank you, Berenice. Um, this one actually affects both of us. We're both involved with a project called the Gallantries, which is a combination of Galaxy and the Carpentries, hence the name. 
And in the Gallantries project, we're working on building easy to reuse modular bioinformatics curriculum or curricula for using across Europe and integrating those with higher education. That's the purpose of the grant. That's not so interesting. What is interesting is that as part of that grant work, we're able to take a lot of the Galaxy training tutorials and even some data carpentries tutorials and start to bring the data carpentries and how do I work with R, how do I make nice plots and bring those into Galaxy, into the world of Galaxy. And we've made this, we've made a couple of lessons so far. If you could go to the next slide, please. They now make a nice coherent story. We start with the reference-based RNA-seq data analysis in R, or sorry, in Galaxy. So you do all of the analysis steps in Galaxy, you work through your data, you get some result files. And at the end, you're left with the questions of, okay, how do I plot these? And there we move into our studio in Galaxy, where we use R to teach them basic R, advanced R. And then finally, we apply these skills with visualizing the RNA-seq count data with R and ggplot. And this has been a really nice bit of modular curricula that we've been able to reuse a couple of times now in some other workshops as well as the more recent GTN Smorgasbord event, which was the large peak that Bernice showed on the graph of the usage. I think that's all I have to say on that. Do you want to add anything, Bernice? Mm, I think you did. Okay, next slide. I think, oh yes, yeah, sorry, Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord, for those of you who don't know, was a very, well, the largest ever Galaxy event that was organized by Saskia Hilteman and myself. And we put together with the entire Galaxy community, the Galaxy Training Network, Seneca, and Gallantries, this event for, I think, 1,168 people registered. And we had something like 568 participants actually join the training. And our studio in Galaxy was one of the features that we saw overwhelming praise for when we started to collect the feedback from students. This was one of the cool features that not really enough people know about. So hopefully both Smorgasbord and this webinar can help address that. This is such a good feature. These integrations have been made so much more scalable with their new infrastructure, thanks to Dan. We're so happy that you know it's now production ready and ready to be used for gigantic 500 person online courses. And we've seen some really good feedback from that. Next slide, please. So if you want to learn more about the interactive tools, there are a lot of tutorials on the Galaxy Training Network. For many of them, um, we've uh, either updated the training materials to integrate the new interactive tools, or we've just written training materials around the uh, system that was built. For instance, like the Wallace, where there is an existing container that they built some nice shiny interface. And now they're able to bring that into the Galaxy world and integrate that with other tools. And we've written, we've had nice training materials written on all of this. If you go to the Galaxy Training Network, um, training.galaxyproject.org, you'll find a lot of different tutorials covering these. I don't think we're currently tagging the tutorials that use interactive tools, but that's definitely something we'll do. Next slide. Okay, over to you then. Great. So uh, we've seen a very good preview of all the exciting things that we can do with interactive tools already. Um, there's a lot of these interactive tools that have been um, created by the community members and by very diverse communities. Um, and so we're, we're, you know, really looking forward to going full force with uh, adding additional tools for even more communities. Um, additional enhancements um, are intended to be applied to Jupyter and our studio to allow them to work uh, better within workflows and, and for sharing rerunnable actual instances that you may have created so that someone else can, can parameterize, um, you know, basically Jupyter and RStudio when you launch it so that you can have done an interactive analysis, uh, but then you can also parameterize and launch basically on a, a batch, uh, batch style uh, way. Um, we're looking forward to enabling pausing and resuming of uh, GXTs because sometimes you're in the middle of, of doing analysis, but you, you have other things that you need to do. And so right now those, those tools will just keep on running and, and that's not great. So, so it'd be really useful to be able to pause them and shelve them and just resume them exactly from the state that they were at previously. Um, we're also looking towards um, adding enhanced collaboration and simultaneous usage. Um, currently, you can share interactive tools um, with another user by sharing the tokenized access um, URL. 
However, um, that basically gives the other user, um, you know, access to your actual uh, running interactive tool. In the future, it would be really good if we can apply uh, role-based access control so that you can give users varied access to an interactive tool. You know, maybe you will have admin privileges for that interactive tool, um, but the actual um, um, user-based one will have different privileges. And so you can share running tools with um, other users um, and revoke and restrict access um, in that sort of way. Um, we're also looking to add additional support for integration with uh, Galaxy's center panel. Um, and so this is usually just um, a, 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 um, a side effect of the way that a lot of these Docker containers are being built since we can generally use existing Docker containers released by um, specific by the groups that have actually created those underlying tools that often release a, a Docker container that might contain a shiny app and we can just launch that directly. Um, sometimes there's issues with those not allowing iframes and so forth. And so better integration to actually have it, having them directly within Galaxy so that you can see your tools on the left-hand side, your history on the right-hand side and, and so forth. Um, we're also going to be adding a lot more training materials. So there's currently a, a work in progress um, uh, Python introduction, which is using the Jupyter Notebooks. Um, we're also going to be adding a, um, uh, a, a training material, a tutorial for using um, Galaxy Interactive Tools uh, inside of workflows um, and try to, try to get people really on board with how to, how to use these, not just uh, interactively, but also how to uh, use them within workflows as, as uh, previously shown. So on that, uh, please go try the interactive tools into Galaxy. So at least you can try them on usegalaxy.eu, on usegalaxy.org, usegalaxy.org.au soon. Uh, so let's try, give us feedbacks. We'd love to hear from you, how you use them. Um, if you love them, if you need more of the interactive tools, uh, let us know. We will be eager to add them. We would like to help the you also to integrate them. If you, if you, uh, yeah, I mean, let's try, go and try them. Yeah. And on that, I would like to thank you for listening to this talk. So feel free to ask any question. Um, I think uh, Dan, Elena and me, we, we would like also to thank uh, everybody that organized this webinar. So Bea, David, and Hans Rudolf for sure to make this talk available, uh, possible. And yeah, thanks a lot for listening and thanks for the community to be awesome. Yeah. And I think since we have some extra time, I can give a live demo of an interactive tool if that's interesting for the community. I can share my screen. We'll be brave and do a live demo. So this is our studio in Use Galaxy EU, of course. Um, no, a lot of the interactive tools have different parameters you can set. The R Studio one is, however, very simple. You can just um, there aren't any data sets to select or anything like that. You just start our studio. It starts to run and it'll be available under the user menu. This worked instantly the last time I tested this during the talk. Oh, click to display, good. When you click that, you'll be taken to our studio running inside Use Galaxy U. And you have full access to your Galaxy history, of course, which is where you get to do fun stuff. So the interactive tool graph that we showed earlier today, I made this in Galaxy and I'll remake this really quickly. I had all of my data stored inside the container. So I can just use the GX get function uh, to access all of the data in my Galaxy history. So I could do GX get four and I'll read it in as TSV or tab, tab separated data. I can view this data object. You'll see that it pops up over here. We've got this nice view of all of the data. I can also do things like load in old histories. So I've got this history here um, and I can do load history, gx get, um, that was number 13. 
and this will load into R all of the history of the commands that I ran in the previous session. So I can just rerun that I want to pull out my tool ID as a short ID without the interactive tool portion. And then maybe I want to make a quick plot after I load the ggplot library. And this will make a nice plot for us. All of this completely interactive within Galaxy, all of the data stored within Galaxy running on Galaxy infrastructure. It's very scalable now. We've got a lot of infrastructure, thanks to jean marc and Bjorn, to support all of these containers running on these Galaxy EU. I think they have a dedicated portion of the cluster just for running interactive tools. And so you make some nice plot. You, once you're done with that, you can save it to your container. And once you've saved it, you can just do a GX put to send it back to Galaxy. And you'll notice over here in Galaxy, my out.png showed up. And so that's the joy of interactive tools. Uh, these are not, the RStudio and Jupyter ones are not as well integrated as the ones Stan showed where they work as part of a workflow. Here it's a lot more used or more often used just for exploratory analyses where you want to do some ad hoc queries. You want to make some graphs and figure out what you want to do with your tool later. And then later you'll come back and encapsulate that as a proper Galaxy tool once it's done. Once you know all of what you want to do. Okay, look at that, beautiful, love it. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Thank you all for watching the live demo. I'm so glad that worked. <laughs>